I'm Neil Marco, and with me is Kay Sumner Einfeld. Today's date is July 8, 1988. We're at the Marriott Hotel near the Los Angeles International Airport. And this week is a special week because it's the Tall Clubs International Convention celebrating the 50th anniversary of Tall Clubs. Kay Sumner Einfeld started the Tall Clubs just about exactly 50 years ago. Here we are at the golden anniversary. And we're talking to Kay today, and we're going to find out why and how she did all that. Kay, tell us, what gave you the idea to start a tall club? Well, I'll tell you, I suppose I'd better go back to day one. When I was in the schoolyard one day, I looked around and suddenly realized I was the tallest girl in the school. I was eight or nine years old, so then I went around saying there ought to be a tall club, you know. I felt like I was so lonely up so high. So I thought nothing of it, and then a few years later, I suppose that notion spilled over into an article I wrote for the LA Times about the trials and tribulations of being a woman over six feet tall. Down in the very end of that, I slipped a special sentence, and that special sentence said, if any young people my height or taller are reading this article, they should contact me. And maybe we could have a Longfellows Club. Then about six weeks later, I set a date for open house and invited those respondents and anyone else interested. And on that first evening in my living room, I faced only eight people. But those eight were the most wonderful people I had ever met because I never had a chance to meet a girl that I could see eye to eye, and I never seldom ever met a fellow I could just even look up to one inch. I don't know where all the tall people were. I guess they were hiding themselves away like I was. Well, from that little group of only nine charter members, we just thought, well, this club will be a fad, and in time, perhaps just fade away. So we were surprised when the publicity uh, that we had in the next two or three months went across the country and we began hearing from tall people asking us how they could get started. So we sent out a lot of information and we were delighted Kansas City was the first one to our knowledge who organized the second tall club. That is great. At the time you were working for the Disney Studios. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit on how you got that job and what you were doing for them. I had always been in love with any kind of commercial artwork, but never dreamed I'd be getting into cartooning. So I just went to the studio one day and I wasn't invited. I heard other people crash gates in Hollywood. So I thought, well, I'll be a gate crasher, see if I can get away with it. So finally I sat there for an hour and I got up enough courage to walk through the little catch gate there as if I belonged. And sure enough, they let me no one stopped me. So I walked around, finally found what I had heard was the girls' department for inking and painting. And I just walked in casually and said, I'm available for work. And they said, oh, fine, we're, we're hiring now. We'd be glad to have you. So that uh, was how I happened to start working for Disney. And they were hiring for the express purpose of putting out Snow White and Seven Dwarfs. Fantastic. So what was your exact job with them? I did uh, inking, painting, and special effects. You were drawing dwarfs as well, as the I legend was, has it. I was soon known as the giant girl who painted dwarfs for Walt Disney. And I just did dwarfs hour after hour, day after day, month after month. <laughs> and finally I thought, my goodness, you know, Disney's doing something nice for little dwarfs, little people, but what's going on for tall people in this world? Yes. So that's what gave me the incentive to write this story about what it meant to be a woman over six feet tall. And then uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not picked up on this idea too. Well, that was two years later. Oh. They invited me, Ripley, of course his staff, invited me to New York to be on his program, Believe It or Not. Mm -hmm. And that gave us worldwide publicity, and also Life Magazine uh, came to one of our parties and took a party story, and that gave us 
around, that really put us around the world, and then after that, clubs started everywhere. Fantastic. Well, why did Ripley's hear about you? Just some kind of publicity, because we were hot news there for a while. Never been anything like it. And, in fact, you know, nobody ever heard of a tall club. I remember we used to walk arm in arm down Hollywood Boulevard, going to some show or doing something, and so many people walking toward us would see us as a group, you know, so tall. They'd come up to us, grab our hand, shake our hand, and say, what show are you in? We want to go see your show. You know, they Fantastic. thought we were show people because they didn't ever hear of a tall club. Did you ever think when you were starting the tall club, the first one, that it would ever take off like this? No, that was never. If anyone had said that in 50 years we would have over 3,000 members in the United States and Canada, more than that, across Europe, I would have laughed and said, no, not in my lifetime. Incredible. You thought it would just be one club? Just one club. The fact that anyone else took up the idea was simply astounding. Uh, your height requirements for that for the club, for the OA club, is women must be six foot tall mm -hmm. and men have to be six foot four. That's the original club. That's my club. Mm -hmm. And when we held our first convention in 1947, we wanted to keep those heights. But you know, the Eastern Club delegates said, we don't have as many tall people in the East as you have in the West, and we can't possibly form a club with such height, uh, those height requirements, you see. So we said, well, then we'll uh, join uh, you and uh, your height requirements of 5'10 for women, 6'2 for men. However, we wanted each club to keep, if it wishes, its own height requirements. Mm -hmm. So today, we still have our same. All the other clubs have the minimum for the national organization. And you're the only club with those super right high now. requirements. Yes. A lot of other clubs, San Francisco Tip Toppers, uh, the Seattle Timberliners, they had higher requirements or different. But they've all come down to the standard except the original club. And you know why? Our original slogan is the world's highest society. Uh, what do you think of the European clubs and how did they get started? That's a good question. I know Felix Schleicher started the one in Germany and they now have over 30 clubs. Well, they're very popular. There's a club in Switzerland. There's one in Austria. There's one in Czechoslovakia. A very strong one in Sweden, very popular one in Denmark, one in Holland, and there's even one in Australia. So uh, I think that Felix Schleicher set the ball rolling, and then just like here, the publicity just escalated the whole idea in these other countries. Australia? Yeah. I haven't heard of that one. When did that start? I'm going to talk about that tomorrow night a little bit. I have a special surprise for TCI from okay. the Australians. So I can't tell you now, it's a secret. Okay, I can appreciate that. Okay, any final words to put down here? Well, I, as I say, I love the club slogans and I like to quote one that has captured a lot of attention and perhaps a lot of laughs. And that came originated, or that originated with Houston. They have it on their t-shirts and I still have the cap that says across the top, life is too short not to be <laughs> That's great. Kay, a lot of people have said to me, and I think you've heard it over and over again, that the tall clubs have changed their lives, that their social lives are much better now, they're happier people, they can make friends through yeah. these tall clubs. And it's to your credit. How do you feel when people say that? Well, I really feel like I'm just the girl next door, and I like to have everybody think. I'm the girl next door. They can approach me any time with any problem, any tall problem at all. And if I have an answer, I'm glad to share it. Thank you, Kate. You're terrific. Uh, we all love you, all 3,000 of us throughout North America and in Europe, too. You're quite a hero. And thank you for doing this with us tonight. Well, it's just been a delight. And please call me again. Okay. All right. Thank you.